Before then, lawbreakers in the state were punished by the same methods in use since colonial times. Criminals faced public humiliation and barbarous tortures like lashing and branding or spending long periods of time in the stocks. But America was becoming a civilized democracy. Auburn Prison was intended to offer a more humane alternative to corporal punishment. Based on the Quaker ideal of man's innate goodness, the prison was built on the belief that solitude and hard labor could return criminals to their true moral purity. Throughout the 19th century, new inmates were expected to cooperate as they were processed into the prison, searched, then stripped and bathed. Finally, their physical features were carefully measured and cataloged for identification. They were then led to their cells to begin life under a penal philosophy known around the world as the Auburn system. The first cell houses would become the model adopted by prisons across the United States. Each stone cell was just large enough to hold one man, a cot, and sometimes a chair. There was little natural light and sanitary facilities were nothing more than a slop bucket. The slop bucket was used because there was no plumbing in the facility's uh, cells. So an inmate used the bucket for his personal use and he remained with that until morning when they all marched to the bucket house to dispose of whatever they had in their bucket and then proceeded to work and then later to breakfast. The inmates were issued one loaf of bread each day and ate shoulder to shoulder in the dining hall. Guards stood by to make sure that no words were spoken. In fact, strict silence was maintained at all times. It was the most profound feature of the Auburn system. The silent system and the Auburn system was uh, based upon uh, total control of the inmates from dawn to dusk. The inmate silent system demanded that the inmates not speak to each other. They were to spend their evenings in complete silence in a solitary cell. After a few weeks in Auburn, the urge to talk became almost irresistible, but silence was enforced with swift punishment. Inmates were flogged for talking in the mess hall and flogged again if they tried to communicate using sign language. The silence was meant for the inmate to be able to reflect uh, on their wrongdo wrongdoing so that their conscience uh, would be a principal source of their punishment. And silence and labor were thought to be uh, a regime in which the inmate would be reformed. The silence not only furthered Auburn's goal of penitence and self-reflection, it also enhanced security. Inmates who could not talk could not plot escapes or riots. At night, the guards who were known as keepers tiptoed shoeless up and down the cell blocks to detect whispers. Auburn's early inmates spent their days in silent labor. To make the prison self-supporting, they manufactured clothing, chairs, carpets, wagons, and brooms. Female inmates who were housed in the attic above the South Wing cell block spent long hours in sewing rooms six days a week. When prisoners were not at work, each and every movement was regimented and controlled. The lockstep, which was instituted in Auburn, was a shuffle, military-type step, where one inmate would walk behind another in tight formation with his hand upon the inmate's shoulder in front of him, and they were all to have their downcast eyes and all looking to one side towards the principal keeper or the keeper who was marching them, and the keeper would have a cane, and he would hit the cane against the ground or a wall to uh, signify direction or order that he wished the inmates to comply with. 